And the award for the most inconsistent podcast for 2024 goes to The Real Lovers Podcast. I know on the last episode of The Real Lovers Podcast that I released talking about our favorite, four favorite um, black cinema films for Black History Month, which came out, I believe, back in July. That Now that I recall, I can't re- really remember talking about a Black History like episode in July. Now we're talking about the last Black History episode where I talk about our favorite, our, our four favorite uh, black cinema films with Lieutenant Commander Ray, and it's in August. It's kind of hard to believe that we're already in August already. It feels like 2024 is just getting started, but also 2024 has been uh, so much has been happening this year. And um, with this uh, final episode of the Black Cinema Four Favorite series here on the lobby, uh, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like a weight is being lifted off my shoulders and I'm ready to start covering more movies from the Letterbox Top 250 this Friday look forward to uh, Goodwill uh, Goodwill Hunting the next movie in that Letterbox Top 250 series where I talk with uh, that nerd in theater or uh, Sean uh, about his favorite film Goodwill Hunting and uh, yeah that was should be releasing this Friday and um I have another little series dropping. Um, it it's still in development a little bit, but you'll you'll get a a new release review coming from me uh, very very soon, and that will be a little hint into what series that we're uh, retrospective series that we're going to be um, diving deep into uh, here on the Rail Lovers podcast. And uh, I do have one more episode that recorded back in April, I believe. Uh, I recorded it uh, with Watch With Memes, and we talked about Monkey Man, one of my favorite uh, movies um, from from this year. And uh, yeah, Uh, that was a really great conversation I had with uh, Watch With Memes. So be on the lookout for that. Other than that, after this episode that you're about to hear and... The Monkey Man uh, and the Monkey Man um, review that I did with Watch with Neebs, those will be the last episodes that I've been sitting on for like the last couple of months. So I am terribly sorry that I've been sitting on these episodes for way too long. Uh, 2024 has been a year. It's definitely been a year. But uh, August, it's really starting to turn up. It's like we got uh, just a bunch of interesting things going on in the world right now a lot more uplifting things going on in the world uh my mental health is uh, slightly better still kind of struggling with that but it's uh it's definitely getting better for sure um but yeah um but without further ado i'm going to stop yapping so you guys can go ahead and listen to this episode that you've been clamoring for this for the last uh uh doing off the top of my head for the last uh six months you've been asking for this episode um Hopefully, uh, Lieutenant Commander Ray is still a fan of the podcast. I'm pretty sure she is, but um, we had a really great time talking about our favorite, four favorite uh, black cinema films. So without further ado, uh, enjoy the episode. See ya. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Lobby, a podcast that lives here on the Real Lovers podcast feed. My name is Marla Silverbrand, your host, as always. And all this month, we are celebrating Black cinema. And uh, joining me on this... uh, You know what? I'm just going to... This is going to be a rather somber intro for our guests that we have today, talking celebrating Black cinema. Uh, She goes by uh, Lieutenant Commander Ray on TikTok and YouTube. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a long time coming. (laughs) <laughs> uh having having you on this podcast because you were one of the first people that shouted me out on tiktok and listened to the podcast and it re- i saved that video and i watch it whenever oh. i'm feeling down uh so and i've been trying to get you on for the longest time but the writer strikes was kind of like holding us back yeah. so yeah but ray L- lieutenant commander ray welcome to, to the lobby how are you doing today thank you for having me pretty good yeah We've been friends on TikTok for a while. I think Since the beginning. you were probably one of the first people that I 
like became friends with on there back I think mm-hmm. in like I started my page in like 2021 maybe mm-hmm. so it's been a while um yeah. yeah so I'm excited to be here yeah I'm excited to have you on here and uh I, and I asked you uh just kind of like oh my guest I've had this month here uh on the mm-hmm. lobby to just give uh, to come up with like your four favorite black films mm-hmm. of like of all time just to, in celebration of black history month and it's a it i i just loved like the series that i'm doing like all this mm-hmm. month is because i'm opening my eyes to a lot more different uh like black films and just mm-hmm. and i'm sharing the films that i love that are d- uh, directed or starring like uh black actors but um sure. without uh without further ado let's just get right into it uh yes. uh Ray, do you want to go first with your first pick? So do you mean, okay, so you want to do like one at a time and then, or just list all four that I picked? How do you let's want just, to do it? Let's just do one at a time. Let's just okay. do one at a time. Yeah. Um, so the first one I picked is The Last Holiday with mm-hmm. Queen Latifah. Have you ever seen it? Yes. I, I It's um, been a while since I've seen it, but yeah. I love Queen Latifah. <laughs> she just is such a beautiful, warm energy. And the messaging of the movie, it's kind of one of those movies that like, I don't think people really pay attention to because it seems kind of like one of those like campy, like early 2000s movies, but it's mm-hmm. got like such a gorgeous message. Basically, um, she works at a retail store and... Um, gets some bad news she like gets injured and then gets some bad news that she's got like a terminal illness Mm -hmm. and she decides to take the next couple of weeks of her life to live the life that she had always wanted to live Mm -hmm. only to find out that it was a misdiagnosis and she like kind of gets a new lease on life like don't spend your time um living the status quo live your dreams because you don't know how much time you have Mm -hmm. um i just i love it and it's such a warm message especially since it is technically kind of like a holiday movie she it's around like christmas time i think Mm -hmm. um yeah i love it yeah i i I love this film as well i remember actually watching this with my mom uh, Mm -hmm. a lot a lot like um like when this film when this film came out and i just love queen latifah's just energy throughout uh, like pretty much everything that she does and Mm -hmm. I do like the message a lot. It kind of reminds me of of the bucket list, of, mm-hmm. uh, a movie starring uh, Morgan Freeman and uh, who who else is? I think the... it might be Robert De Niro or. I, think so. I would have to look it up. It might, I know it was like one of those older kind of classic actors, maybe like Robert Redford or someone. Yeah, for sure. But uh, that's a great pick. I, I love that. I love the message as well of yep. uh, just kind of like living your life without like any meaning to it and just yeah don't don't have any regrets don't have any regrets. i had a friend actually say in the past like couple of weeks like basically she said take the breaks off quote unquote like live your life because mm-hmm. one no one else is going to and you might run out of time to live it yourself so do what you want live the best version of yourself um don't put your dreams on hold it's such an arbitrary kind of thing that it's like well, maybe in the future, it's like, first of all, for the future, sometimes people, it, that doesn't come. Um, mm-hmm. So do it now, whatever your goals are, start pursuing them now. Um, and I love that at the end, she kind of did get her happy ending um, because she fell in love with L. Cool J's character, who she had kind of been like pining for. And she was able to start a restaurant. That's kind of always where her passion was. So mm-hmm. I love that in the end she did get her happy ending and that kind of was still the pursuit of that dream. Cause once you open the restaurant, you still got to run it and everything, but at least she was happy in doing that. Georgia bird spent her life. One was bird. Mr. Williams. Dreaming of possibilities. I suggest you get with the program, Miss bird. Yeah. You're just scared of some man getting a hold of that booty of yours. <laughs> Until the day. I was wondering sometime if you're free, I'll get it. Fate. This can't be right. Changed everything. I got three weeks to live. And I feel like that message could, but it fits more. It fits perfectly to the mm-hmm. world that we're living in today. It's just like, yeah, you can't. I can't tell you how many jobs I left, like because I wasn't happy, and mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not going to be unhappy sitting in this job, mm-hmm. just like wasting away. And kind of like a perfect companion piece. I'm not sure if you've seen, uh, a. Uh, uh, Carol at the end of the world, I think it's on Netflix. Carol uh, at the end of the world, I don't think I have, but I'm gonna it's add kind of, that. It's very similar to that. I've just uh, I watched it like right at the end of 2023, and it was mm-hmm. uh, 
just kind of like Carol, just kind of like going through the same thing Queen Latifah is going through. And, yeah. uh, and uh, just kind of like, she's kind of living this kind of like mon uh, mundane life and the mm -hmm. end of the world happens. And uh, like everyone is, uh, it's kind of the opposite a little bit now that I'm thinking about it out loud, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, great pick. The Last Holiday starring mm -hmm. Queen, Queen Latifah. And that's, was that like early 2000s, right? Oh uh, Yeah, I want to say it was in the first like few years of 2000s, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great pick. Uh, my next pick, my uh, first pick is a film that it was uh, nominated for Best Documentary Feature in uh, mm. 2022. And uh, I, well, the 2022 um, Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's a musical documentary. It's directed by Questlove and it's Summer of mm. Soul. This it's is been a, on my watch list for a long time. The, it uh, Do what you can and see this as, as, as quickly as possible because I absolutely I absolutely love this when it when it came out in 2021 and mm -hmm. it really opened my eyes to to just the like the black community and like mm -hmm. and how they use music and positivity to uplift themselves like during unrest mm -hmm. and and it really um I, like I knew that the, I, I, when doing like this series I like I, I'm I started to notice that there's a lot of like black films that mm -hmm. are pretty are unwatchable just because they haven't been preserved or anything like that yeah and knowing that like this whole Har harlem cultural uh, culture festival mm -hmm. was filmed and then just put in the basement somewhere so no one could watch it and right. yet yet woodstock this famous music festival that everyone <laughs> yes. knows about featuring white people it it <sighs> kind of grind my gears a lot <laughs> but i yeah i have so much respect for quest love for get, finding like this footage and repurposing it and getting like these artists uh, artists back that perform there and what let them watch like their their performances it, it's just a incredible documentary that's uplifting and just seeing like all these black people just enjoying themselves and mm -hmm. it, like i said like during unrest but yeah it's yeah. a it's an incredible documentary <laughs> That's amazing. Um, that's funny that you mentioned that that because it's kind of like the um, I I would say the uh, the re the reestablishing of black people in culture as mm -hmm. if culture didn't come from black people, which it absolutely did. Mm -hmm. um, because this in the last couple of weeks since the Super Bowl, we've seen this backlash to um Beyonce releasing a country album as if there haven't been always country black people who produced music mm -hmm. we get um bluegrass and some of the other southern versions of jazz music of course there's always been black country singers and she's from Texas like I don't know where you have to frame your mind to expect this Texan black woman to not sing country it's kind of crazy and so mm -hmm. for Questlove to be able to present the, a, a musical genre that he connects with because he is from there. He's always been connected with it. But like you said, finding this um, this recording and uh, being able to put that back into the minds of people for people to be able to see it for mm -hmm. um, the joy. And it really is kind of like, because I've heard about the um, documentary, like I've looked into it. And so I knew kind of what it was about. Because um, my mom, like, went in the um, in the seventies, she actually lived in Washington D.C., which had a similar musical vibe in that era, and so it's like there was comparable things happening. But of course, you get the shelving of uh, this black experience, and so for it to win the Oscar was really lovely and a recognition that was duly served. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And just like, and when watching it. Uh... On uh, watching it again, I was amazed by how many famous like black musicians performed. Like you had Stevie Wonder, the likes mm -hmm. of Stevie Wonder, like performing like uh, like at this like like week long week long like uh, like event. And mm -hmm. the the fact that people weren't able to see this until Questlove, like it 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 breaks my heart. But yeah. uh, that's uh, Summer of Soul. It's directed by Questlove, like I said, and it, uh, you can stream it now on Hulu for free or for membership or whatever. Are you ready, black people? Yeah! Are you ready? 
Are you really ready? Are you ready to listen to all the beautiful black voices, the beautiful black feeling, the beautiful black waves moving in beautiful air? Are you ready, black people? Are you ready? Ray, what's your next pick? Um, so my next movie is Black Panther. Um, it's such a great movie. Um, and I think in the MCU, it kind of was, we needed a different type of hero when mm-hmm. it came out in that, I think it was in what phase one, I think, mm-hmm. um, it was, it was honestly such like a, a, a celebration of an idea of like, what if black people hadn't, what if Africa had not been colonized? Like, <laughs> um, and the kind of the majesty in that um of course Chadwick is fantastic it's got some really huge hitters Lupita and Angela Bassett um yeah it was just such a beautiful celebration and idea um and the character of Black Panther I think had been around for a long time he just had not gotten the kind of spotlight that other characters like Superman and Batman and other characters like that have gotten. So I'm glad they were like, we're going to put this on the map by making this movie. And it was amazing. (laughs) I have seen gods fly. I've seen men build weapons that I couldn't even imagine. Uh Uh-huh. I've seen aliens drop from the sky. Yeah but I have never seen anything like this. Yeah, uh, I, great pick. I love uh, Black Panther, both of, both of the Black Panthers, Wakanda yes. Forever and, and, the, and the first Black Panther. And uh, last, uh, last uh, episode, I talked about uh, another uh, Ryan Coogler film, Fruitvale Station. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of compared Fruitvale Station and Wakanda Forever like they they kind of had similar tones where it's kind of it, mm. where it's black people dealing with grief and how mm. Ryan Coogler does that in such a like a wonderful and respectful way to towards mm-hmm. the families because in what kind of like like in Wakanda Forever they do the like uh they do yes. like a funeral for for Chadwick Boseman and I thought mm-hmm. that sort of like somber like like scene it was done in the most respectful way and mm-hmm. and how ryan coogler basically he like he's done that before with like fruitvale station this tragic mm-hmm. death of like this black person at the mm-hmm. at a bart subway station and the like it, i i don't know he just he knows how to like direct like those type of scenes like incredibly well and i i love that he got like his like everyone started recognizing him from the original from the, like it, the first black panther made a billion dollars right Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the fact that he got paid off of that and he was able to kind of do whatever he wanted. Uh, I, yeah. I I love Ryan Coogler. I, I also loved that the first film, I don't I don't remember the second film all that all that much because I've only seen it once. But mm-hmm. uh, I love that the first one features Oakland, California, like, yeah, uh, like uh, pretty heavily. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, love Black Panther. It's so great. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, he's. Um shaped up to be like a really insightful um with like a specific vision for the films that he makes Mm -hmm. and i don't think i've seen a few of his films outside of like black panther um because he also i think he also did um creed right Mm -hmm. he did the first creed movie um yeah he's got a really keen artistic eye and with that, a lot of empathy, like you said, this the um, funeral scene um, at the beginning of Black Panther 2, What Kind of Forever, was really beautiful because, you know, it kind of serves a dual purpose, one for the character and also for Chadwick. It was just really well and tastefully done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, v- very tastefully done. But um, yeah, great pick. Black Panther, directed by Ryan Coogler. It's a... Uh, the best Marvel movie in my in, in my my opinion, just to get some uh, people in the comments <laughs> <laughs> get it a little angry, but it's no but, less than top five for yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, great pick. Uh, my next pick is a film that came out recently. It's uh, mm. uh, in 2024. I, I didn't think I was gonna like this film very much, but uh, I feel like I had to say it, uh, see it just because my name. Marley. <laughs> so uh, the film's Bob Marley, One Love. It's directed by 
Ronaldo Marcus Marcus Green. And I, I feel like for me, biopics, music biopics are kind of mm. like played out at this point. Mm. But I and like I don't think this film is like a perfect film, but mm -hmm. I think what uh what the Marley estate like Mar like Ziggy Marley and like the rest mm -hmm. of his family wanted to get across with it, with with this film is that they wanted to show what Bar Bob Marley's music meant for mm -hmm. the people listening to it and what Bob Marley wanted people to get from his music and it was to bring people together mm -hmm. during civil unrest and mm -hmm. and genocide right. uh, like uh, in in Jamaica and I feel like now uh, I don't want to like, yeah, especially now with like genocide that's happening in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I feel like what the Marley estate really wanted, like with this film, is that they wanted some positivity to mm -hmm. uh, like even the, within times of unrest, listen to music and specifically Bob Marley music. And mm -hmm. uh, and uh, things will you can see a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I, and especially spe since my name is Marley. Like throughout mm -hmm. my life, people have always been like, "Oh, uh, did you did your parents smoke weed? Did you mm -hmm. like did they light up?" And I'm like, Bob Marley meant a lot more to, sure. than, than just like lighting up and just getting high. So I love that this film one it it helped <laughs> it helped with uh, my name kind of like getting out of the gutter a little bit, and also yeah. I love that the Marley estate was able to like. A, like show a different side of Bob Marley. It's not the mm -hmm. complete side of Bob Marley, but it's a it, it it's a really great film. Have you have you seen mm -hmm. this film yet? Ray? I or? haven't seen it yet, but I have seen um, reviews by a couple of Jamaican creators who mm -hmm. um, kind of talked about it. Like I think people are used to some other, like you said, um, music biopics that are either more expansive or talk about more of the um, person or the music but not both together and you really he's kind of inseparable from his music mm -hmm. um he was a huge source of hope and light for a lot of people mm -hmm. and so the Jamaican creators that I've seen that have talked about this really talked about um how impactful it was to them and the you can you can definitely see and tell um that his estate had a lot to do with the creation it wasn't sensationalized so mm -hmm. I'm glad it was more honest. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Cause all I ever have redemption songs. When you write that? All my life. I'm glad that uh, Jamaican creators are, are are liking this film because what some of the like the negative things that I saw from mm -hmm. other Jamaican cr creators is that uh, Kingsley Benadir played Bob Marley mm -hmm. and he is far from Jamaican. Mm -hmm. But I will have to, I I like I was worried about that going in because Jamaican accents never really come across like mm -hmm. on screen. But I don't know what who has uh, who he had as a dialect coach, but. Mm -hmm. He nailed that Jamaican accent, Kingsley Benadir, uh, who also was in Barbie as a Ken. But uh, I thought he would—I thought he did a really great uh, job uh, of of doing the Jamaican accent and not having mm -hmm. it be like kind of like a caricature of Bob right. Marley. But um, yeah, I, I, it, for anyone that was feeling kind of worried about that, it's it's definitely nothing to worry about. I do wish that there was subtitles when watching this movie, just because. Uh. Okay. He heavy Jamaican accents, it's, especially very, very it can hard be to be broken for sure. It's mm -hmm. not a direct translation. So, yeah. Yeah. But um, that is Bob Barley, One Love. I, I believe it's still in theaters right now. You can check yeah. that one out. It's, you can check it out in theaters. And it's directed by Reynaldo Marcus Green. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's in theaters. But Ray, what's your next pick? Um, so my next pick is Hidden Figures, which is uh, based off of a true story mm -hmm. um, about uh, Black women in the space program back in the 60s, which like, I, and it's so, so like my initial reaction after seeing this movie, as an educated woman, I went to college, I graduated from college, um, 
I'm like, this is the this is the kind of thing like nerd black girls should know about. Like, mm-hmm. if I had known that these women were so impactful, like I would have had a poster of them. Like, this is the kind of you know what I mean. Like, they're yeah. that cool that there's like uh, to to be fighting racism, to be fighting stereotypes that women can't be smart alone, let alone black women, mm-hmm. and to be so pivotal in the um launch of the first um spacecraft to the moon like is Mm -hmm. crazy it's like how did no one know about this and the fact that the uh the real woman um catherine who is played by taraji was received a lifetime achievement award for her work and the space program is amazing. I'm glad that she was honored before she passed away. Um, but it's such a beautiful movie that there was a lot of sacrifice, a lot of fortitude and strength that they had to have to do what they loved, which was obviously higher mathematics. Genius, brilliant. Y'all gonna end up unemployed riding around in this pile of junk. You're welcome to walk the 16 mile. Oh, I'll sit in the back of the bus. Like it me up. You have identification on it? NASA, sir. NASA? I had no idea they hired it. There are quite a few women working in the space program. The least I can do is give y'all an escort. Three Negro women are chasing a white police officer down the highway in 1961. That is a God-ordained miracle. I, I love this film as well. I also, uh, like you said, I love seeing black people, more specifically black women, like yeah. succeed in STEM as well. Mm-hmm. Like you, you don't see that a lot, like uh, like in film. Right. And another film that I, I highlighted this month was a See You Yesterday, mm-hmm. like a, a, a time travel movie about like this black girl that makes like this time machine to go back in time to like save like her brother. I haven't got... seen it, but I saw a trailer. It looks really good. It's really good, but that's like another film that that shows black women, specifically black women, black girls, mm-hmm. like just showing like their love and passion for science fiction and mm-hmm. and science in general. And uh, I, I I haven't seen Hidden Figures in a really long time, but mm-hmm. I it's 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 yet another film where it's like this th- these four women these four women doing something remarkable, like absolutely remarkable, yet we didn't know about it until like this yeah. movie came out and it's heartbreaking that well, there's moments in history that just go it, it, like it, it that go unnoticed it go unnoticed for like the longest absolutely. time it's 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 absolutely ridiculous and and also it's just like i know like black people have it hard enough like in this country mm-hmm. but like black women like having to deal with racism and also being a woman here in america we need to do better. We need to do better as a society. <laughs> the intersection is intersectioning, as they say. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, so it's really a lovely that even in that time, they were able to still be so integral mm-hmm. and for this movie to finally get the spotlight that it deserved, for the, for the women to get the spotlight and having this movie made about them. Yeah. It, it and it was nominated for best picture right or was it or, yeah yeah uh gr- great pick i love that uh I, I love that film i'm definitely gonna rewatch it uh mm-hmm. probably after this recording but uh mm-hmm. yeah uh hit, that's hidden figures it's starring uh who's who uh um taraji p henson octavia spencer and janelle monet um okay. there's a lot of other like black women that you've seen before and like the kind of um, ensemble of other black women in the movie, but those are the three primary characters. Yeah. Uh, Taraja P. Henson also was in another movie that I watched th- this month, uh, Baby Boy, mm-hmm. as oh, well. Okay. Yeah, I loved her in that. She was mm-hmm. like, she's, she's what great. About it, she's going to turn in a performance. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. what the movie is, she's always going to turn in a performance. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, great pick. Uh, uh, but um, my next pick is another new release. I saw it, saw it recently, but it, it it instantly shot to my uh my four favorites here, and uh, it's a uh, it's a Peanuts short short film. You can Ooh. watch it on Apple TV Plus, and it's Welcome Home Franklin. This is oh okay. This is an animated short 
about Franklin from the Peanuts cartoon, and it's directed by it's uh, it's directed by Raymond S. P- uh, Percy. And I'm I'm sure everyone is familiar with Peanuts, like Charlie Brown, mm-hmm. Snoopy. Mm-hmm. It's it's an iconic cartoon, and yeah. I feel like and the most popular I believe of like the animated cartoons is the Thanksgiving yeah. uh, uh, holiday special. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you remember the Thanksgiving feast because it's gone viral on TikTok of <laughs> everyone sitting at like the this picnic table getting ready to eat, and Franklin is on one side, and all the other friends are on the other. And this yeah. is basically giving Franklin his flowers giving him his own animated short. It's produced by Apple TV Plus. And it's absolutely delightful. I, uh, I, uh, it's, it's beautifully animated. I, I mm-hmm. love just kind of, you see like, uh, like the side of Franklin that you, you wanted to see. You see like, you know, like his parents were like military parents and how he's constantly mm-hmm. like moving, uh, mm-hmm. moving yeah. to different like towns and not able to like establish like a friendship. Mm-hmm. And he befriends Charlie Brown, and Charlie Brown is like, I, I want to say Charlie Brown is like the the one white friend that black people always wish they had, sure. because he's so <laughs> supportive. And uh, awesome. and uh, I uh, I don't know, I love it. It's a very it's very short. It's like forty minutes, but it's def- okay. it's definitely a, a a great time. But um, to uh, like the one thing I did want to talk about is like the whole controversy around like Franklin only sitting on one side of the table. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like kind of like a history behind that is that Mm -hmm. when that special came out, it was like, I think it was like er late sixties, early seventies when it came out. Mm -hmm. So just right around like the whole civil rights, like, like movement. And Mm -hmm. um, Charles Schultz was actually the one that said like, I want him in this cartoon. And he fought Mm -hmm. against like the, the, the publisher saying Mm -hmm. like, Hey, uh, like the publisher obviously didn't want, that because they're like oh we can't have mm. people that look like that like in the, like this cartoon wow. and charles schultz was just like no i like if, if you're gonna do this i'm going to just not make these cartoons anymore and wow. the fact that we that charles schultz like stood on the side of mm-hmm. black people even back then makes me love him even more i loved him already okay. but it's absolutely amazing but um what, what do you think of peanuts and have you seen like the um I always loved Peanuts. Like, we always watched all of the, like, specials that came out every year, that replayed every year. Mm-hmm. Um, me and my grandma, we actually used to read the comic strip, like, mm-hmm. in the newspaper every Sunday. Yeah. So, I always loved the um, Peanuts franchise, if you will. Um, cinematic Universe. So. Cinematic Universe, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Charlie Brown, Peppermint Patty, um all of the characters love them all um i don't I, I remember franklin but because he wasn't that big of a character mm-hmm. um it's good that I, I kind of like that when an ip knows that a marginalized character needs flushing out mm-hmm. that they don't have any like kind of problem with going back and giving them their own spotlight so and really for a, for a peanuts uh movie i mean 40 minutes is a reasonable amount of time to tell a good enough story mm-hmm. to spotlight his character um because like the holiday special they I mean with commercials those are usually like an hour long so it's mm-hmm. good that he was able to get that much time for his own character development um and you said it's on Apple TV, or is it anywhere else? Because I don't have Apple TV. It's on Apple TV Plus, but um, wow. yeah, I think it'd be probably a free trial is available out there for um, for people to check out this um, short film. Hi, I'm Franklin. I've lived in a lot of different places. My family is always on the move. This was it, our new town. Do you want to have... <laughs> Excuse me. Making new friends can be hard. I'm Franklin Armstrong. My name is Charlie Brown. It's just really great. I love like the animation. I love that mm-hmm. it's kind of like harkens back to the old Peanuts mm-hmm. like cartoon art style, but also like it's kind of like a mixture between that old art style, but also that Peanuts cartoon that came out mm-hmm. in 2016 that mm-hmm. everyone should go watch. I think that 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 I think it's Sony put that out. Sony Animations mm-hmm. put it out. Uh, just. A really nice blend of animation and just like and also highlighting 
like a, mm-hmm. one the the one and only black character on like right. in the Peanuts universe. But uh, that is uh, Welcome Home, Franklin. Uh, it uh, you can watch it on Apple TV Plus, and it's available now. But um, what's your uh, what's your last pick, right? My last pick is Brown Sugar, which stars um, Tay Diggs and Sanaa Lathan. Um, and I think that this one came out in like the 90s. It's, they're very young in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, it's a rom com. They meet as kids and they grow up as best friends. And then eventually they fall in love. And the movie centers around their experience with hip hop music mm-hmm. as the trajectory for their friendship and relationship, it turns out. Um, I just love it. Um, it's warm. It also actually has Queen Latifah in it. Um, and most Def, the rapper, is also a significant character in the movie. It's mm-hmm. just such a warm, light movie and shows how sometimes the person that is the most important person in your life uh, can also be the person that you're in a relationship with because they live successful separate lives as friends and then eventually realize like oh i love this person forever like it's kind of funny how it kind of how it turns out yeah i it's such a beautiful movie i i wish more people watched it i i haven't seen this film but everything that you described about it sounds like something i want to check out and it sounds like another film that came out last year Mm -hmm. Uh, would you say it's Similar to Past Lives a little bit? I actually haven't seen Past Lives. It's literally the first thing on my watch list (laughs) on Paramount+. Plus. Like, it's the next thing that I plan to watch. Um, I have heard that um, it has that same kind of connected Mm -hmm. uh, theme, um, Mm -hmm. but I haven't seen it yet. I I desperately want to, though. Well, I got homework, and now you got homework. You got to watch Past Lives, and then I'll watch uh, Brown Sugar. I didn't A little bit. <sighs> Did you feel anything? I love uh, black people falling in love. I, yeah. It's like one of my favorite. Uh, like we need more black rom coms. Like in yeah. in today's day day uh, day and age. Uh, which, speaking of another black rom com that was on my list uh, in the last episode, it's Rye Lane. Rye Lane mm-hmm. is like an absolutely absolutely enjoyable like rom com of just about black people just kind of breaking up with their significant others, but they don't. It doesn't. The movie doesn't focus on that, and they mm-hmm. the the two of them basically get together and they're just spending their their time in like uh, on Rye Lane and just like existing and enjoying each other's company. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it it's absolutely incredible, but like I like I said, more black rom coms. Like we yeah. need uh, we need a uh, uh, m- more of those that don't f- feature black trauma. Like, I was gonna it, say it, the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I, it's it's funny because you, that you're gonna say the same thing because throughout this entire month, I tried to focus hmm. like on all my picks or any new watches mm-hmm. on no black trauma. Because mm-hmm. we've seen enough of the twelve years of slaves, enough. yes. Enough of uh, I you know what I. I feel like you could still do a gang related mm. like movie, and it doesn't have to be traumatic. Because mm-hmm. like, I feel like there's other stories to tell there. But mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna say it's a little bit tired at this point. Would you say so? Yeah. 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 The um the movie that we've talked about on the real study this month was mm-hmm. the Great Debaters, and mm-hmm. um. Oh my god, what was the other movie that we talked about? That? Oh, uh, um, The Book of Eli. And then mm-hmm. we did Akilah and the Bee and Dear White People last week. Mm-hmm. So it's a juxtaposition. And each of those has a relative amount of trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited. This week we're doing um, Captain Marvel and the Marvels. And so it's like, let's do some Black superheroes. That yeah. sounds much more fun to do it that way. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So yes more more movies not focusing on trauma um black people they just be people sometimes they don't have to be traumas <laughs> so. right. and or ju- just have them experience things that white people would experience because right. it's like it's one of those things where it's like like black people 
can do things that white white people can do. It's like Absolutely. It, it, it like I don't like this film all that much, but I uh, like King Richard. Kind of mm -hmm. like it, like I know people know who Venus and mm -hmm. Serena Williams are, but uh, but just like black people like succeeding in, in like a professional sport. It's like I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's um, but yeah. Uh, brown, but uh, your pick was a uh, brown sugar. Brown sugar. Yep. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to check that one out. It's gonna shoot to the top of my watch list because uh, I I believe uh, yeah. Danielle from No More Late Fees. She mentioned it. It wasn't okay, in her yeah, fourth yeah. phase, but she she referenced yeah, it. Yeah, she did like, a um she did a rom com series a while back that included it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but definitely gonna check that out. Um, but uh, my last pick um uh, is a film that came out in 2019. It's another kind of it's another Northern California classic because it, it's featured in San Francisco, like the uh, the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and uh, it is the last black man in San Francisco. This is one of the okay, first yes, and early A twenty four films that kind of like a, a lot of people noticed, uh, but uh, I have decided to feature it like this week just because I don't hear a lot of people talking about this film. It's 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 um yeah. It's it's and it's weird and very ironic that not a lot of people talk about this film because it's about just black people getting erased from from San Francisco, a mm -hmm. city they, that was built on the back of like immigrants and people of color. And I think that what the way this film kind of like deals with gentrification, mm -hmm. it deals with it deals with it in such a like honest and true way, and you see mm -hmm. like these black people just getting kicked uh, not necessarily getting kicked out but you just mm -hmm. see them like on the outside like looking mm -hmm. in and i think the uh the thing that i, I it's basically about uh uh jimmy who, uh jimmy fails mm -hmm. he actually he's, it's the actual guy starring in the movie which i i totally forgot that was the case mm -hmm. but uh basically about him trying to get his grandfather's house back that is on fillmore and golden gate in san francisco mm -hmm. And uh, I I just love that this movie is about him kind of like getting that house back and black people claiming back the turf that was mm -hmm. taken away from them. And I feel like it's done in like such an authentic and and unique way. It's shot beautifully, absolutely beautifully, like amazing cinematography. And uh, yeah, have you seen this film, right? Or I haven't. It's also on my watch list. Me and my brother, we were actually looking up black movies last night, mm -hmm. and I'm like, it was on the list. And I'm like, man, I forgot about that. Like, you're right. Like, people don't talk about it. Like, I literally forgot. And I was like, man, I had heard that that was really good. Like, right when it came out, mm -hmm. a lot of people talked about it, and then it kind of just fell out of the discussion. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to making sure I push that to the top of my list um as one of the ones because I I wanted to watch it and then I just forgot about it truthfully yeah it's uh it, it also stars Jonathan Majors as well mm -hmm. I know that he's kind of like a hot button topic a little bit but yeah he's really good in it like I like uh, I've I, I really like <laughs> really yeah I don't know I just see it as the the I, I understand it's an issue, like when, like when mm -hmm. he screws up. But I'm still, I don't. It, this might get into, I don't know, a heated debate. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought, like, kind of like the pushback, like on Jonathan Majors, was a little bit unfair, just because there's plenty of white people that have done far, that have For done sure. similar and far worse things, and we still watch. Uh, well, not you and me, but. People yeah, still get, uh, their movies are still in them. circulation. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when it comes, I mean, I think especially now we see a lot more um, because if people have accessibility to the information. They have accessibility to um, each other in a way that mm -hmm. makes the retrieval of information so easy. And so knowing that even in the past there were actors and television and film performers that are just not good people mm -hmm. um that sometimes depending on who you are that can have a bigger detriment to your career than for mm -hmm. others for sure yeah uh for for sure but um he's still really good in the movie and yeah. uh and there but except 
I feel like the only thing that's probably keeping this film from it's it's like right now it's at a four and a half out of five. It's keeping mm. it from a five is based mm. on like how it how it ends. Just because mm-hmm. I don't want to give give away like the ending too much, but I feel like the ending is a little bit dis is a little disingenuous on like the side mm. of like Jimmy. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't want to give give it away. But if mm-hmm. you kind of like know uh, like about like Black History and just mm-hmm. and and everything around that, you kind of know where you kind of think that uh, Jonathan Major's character is what he's doing is a little unfair. But um, I don't know. It's still it's still really good. Just about I, I I love how poignant like this film is about like how like how white people basically invaded San Francisco. And like probably one of my favorite lines in, in like the movie is like when these two white uh, white women are sitting on the bus and Jimmy mm-hmm. is like sitting next to him and they're talking about how they hate San Francisco. And Jimmy mm-hmm. turn, turn, turns turns around and says and says like, hey, do you love San Francisco? And and there and there's like a back and forth. And Jimmy basically goes on and saying, if you don't love San Francisco, then you're not allowed to hate San Francisco. Right. And I feel like that especially for for being uh, especially living in kind of like a small uh mm-hmm. relative city where i've seen a lot of transplants coming into uh the city like that hit really close to home for me just because it's yeah. uh, you, it, it, it's one of those it's like a love-hate relationship where it's mm-hmm. like it's uh it's like it, when people say that they hate something it's like did you actually watch it or something like that, and kind right. of like going on the TikTok thing, but uh, I don't know. I just th- I just thought that line was like like incredible for me because it's like it's true. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people like I don't live in the city where I was born anymore, mm-hmm. but like my mom and my grandma, they still live up there, mm-hmm. and it's like the city is dead. You know what I mean? Like it's so far lost and gone right now, mm-hmm. um, but it's still my home. Like that's still where I'm from. And so it still has a portion of my heart. But as far as this, I could never live there again. You know what I mean? It's like, you can't, like, I love it, but because I love the potential and what it was, what it could be if somebody figured out how to make a city alive again. Mm -hmm. But that's also like, that's why I hate it. So that makes complete sense. It's like, you hate it here. Is it because you hate it or is it because you love it? Because if it's not because you love it, then I don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. We built these ships. Dredged these canals. In the San Francisco they never knew existed. This is our home. That is uh, the last black man in san francisco it's it's distributed by a24 it's directed by joe Tal- talbot a white guy but uh, he was also from the bay area as well and, and it's just like another it's another thing i know it's important to have like black people behind the camera but mm-hmm. I, I like i had another film is um it was attack the block um mm-hmm. um starring uh john boyega but that's mm-hmm. all that's directed and written by joe cornish it's just so showing that white people can also feature black people and Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be a traumatic like like film. It can be like them kind of like doing sci-fi or doing like a like a personal film like The Last Black Man in San Francisco. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, uh, not saying that it's not important to have like yeah. black people behind the camera, but we can all coexist and yeah. get along and tell stories together. And I think it has to do with too like the diversity of your experience and the mm-hmm. diversity of the people that you hire, like. Mm-hmm you can definitely make a respectful story about another culture. Mm -hmm. But I think that you, one, have to be somewhat integrated or at least in tune to that experience. Mm -hmm. Or if you know you're not well enough to tell it in in the right way to hire people who can help you do that. And so you, you get, I mean, a lot of act, a lot of creators, a lot of movie um, makers have done that. And you can almost always tell when they have done their homework and when they have it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I, tol- I totally agree. Um, but yeah, those are our four favorites. 
our four favorite like black films like during the uh the month of february for black history month but it, i know february is almost over it's hard, mm -hmm. hard to believe it feels like this month just started in my yeah. opinion mm -hmm. but uh this is just like a reminder is that black history uh is all year round not just yeah. 29 days of the year uh oh. but yeah um uh, but those are our four favorites uh, of, of of black films. Uh, this is the part of the show, Ray, where um, you get to tell all of our fellow real lovers that are hanging out in the in the in the lobby where they can find you online. So um, you can find me on TikTok at l c as in Tom dot or period c o m as in mustard dot r a e, and it's the same username. Um, without periods on both TikTok or on um, Twitter and on YouTube. Yeah, and uh, and also if everyone loves hearing uh, Ray talk really eloquently about about film, you can also uh, hear her talking about uh, film on the Real Study as well. A fellow friend of the Real Lovers podcast, and uh, you're a great guest to have uh, have have on this podcast as well as that podcast Ooh. as well. Um, if people uh, loved uh, love this episode, though, you can uh, you can s subscribe or follow the Real Lovers podcast on any podcast where uh, on, on any podcast platform um, like uh, iTunes. Uh, I always mess that up. It's not iTunes anymore. It's Apple Podcast. Apple Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you you could you can listen uh, you can listen or watch this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Or Stitcher, or any anywhere where you listen to podcasts, we're at. Mm -hmm. uh, you can follow us on Twitter as well with uh, with the username at Real Lovers Pod, and uh, that that username is all across Instagram, uh, Instagram Threads. You can find mm -hmm. us on Threads as well. Uh, hit hit that like button as well if you're watching it here on YouTube, and also hit that subscribe button uh, uh, as well on Marley Loves Films YouTube channel and. Uh, and the Real Lovers Podcast YouTube channel as as well. And also, if you want to uh, uh, highlight another Black film that we probably missed, you can drop us a line at, at uh, and leave us a voicemail with the number 213-433-2908. We would love to hear from you. Just let, mention uh, mention um, where you're calling from and uh, how, how you want to be addressed. And uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, you can also uh, donate for uh, as little as a dollar or less to our uh, Patreon. Uh, all these links will be in the description box down below. And uh, yeah, for only a dollar, you can um, uh, subscri subscribe and get access to our community Discord server. And uh, for five dollars on our Patreon, you can re you can request a movie for us to watch and review. And uh, yeah, but um, yeah, but with that being said, um, hold on. Uh, hold on, I was gonna pause. I forgot to mention my. And also, if you want, and also if you want to follow me, Marley Marley Silverbrand on on all social platforms, you can just use the. Um, I, I'm pretty much on any, everything except for Twitter anymore. I, I got rid of that. Uh, I got rid of my Twitter account. But Marley loves film across all platforms: Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube as well. And uh, yeah, but with that being said. My uh, my name is Marley Silverbrand for the Real Livers Podcast, and Lieutenant Commander Ray. And let's get back to the movies. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Lobby part of the Real Livers Podcast feed. This podcast was produced by yours truly, Marley Silverbrand, and it was also edited by Sagir. If you like this podcast, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe, and also leave us a five star rating on your podcast platform of choice. Thank you, and have a great day.